those angel chimes are very lovely. They're modern Christmas decorations. You can buy them almost anywhere. But the original of them was some hundreds of years old, and it was first made in Scandinavia. Even then, they understood the principle of heat rising from candles and driving a propeller. That's what makes it go. But here's one you can make, very simply, if you're careful, out of ordinary aluminium foil, and it just works off the heat from your hands. That's all. That's enough to drive it. But you do have to be accurate. And so you start off with aluminium foil like this. It's very thin and smooth it flat, and you're going to have to put some folds in it, but don't get any crinkles that you don't want. The folds have to be exactly right. The whole thing has to be exactly right. And if you go wrong, it's probably better to ditch it and just start again. So you start with a fold. Make sure it's where you want it to be and flatten it out. So we fold it in halves. Now we're going to fold it in quarters by making sure that that rib comes over there. You notice it's exactly lined up. Squash it down there, squash it down here. No kinks yet. And here's the trickiest fold of all. We have to go into eighths by making a fold that runs exactly through that point. And that is awkward. But here it goes, exactly through the point. Those edges lined up on each other and squash the whole thing down. You've got a triangular piece of foil. Well, at this stage, you want to cut it into a much better triangle than that. So we fold or bring it over like this and cut it into an equilateral triangle about the size of, well, I guess, two of your fingers, something like that. Now, there's one last thing to do before you unroll it, and that is to cut a slit from the base of that triangle two-thirds of the way up towards the point, like that. Half to two-thirds should do it. There we are. And now we unwrap it. And that will take a lot of care because the scissor has now squashed uh, all those sides into each other. So as we unwrap it, you'll find that things stick together and you have to move very carefully so as not to tear it. So I'm going to use a pencil here, work slowly and carefully and unwrap the entire thing. That's the finished article. Finished, that is, except for balancing and twisting. We'll do the balance next. If you've folded it accurately, you'll find all of the lines go through the dead center, like that. And that's terrific, because we now take a household pin with a sharp point and place it in that center. Don't push it through, don't make a hole, just pretty well rest it there. Put it on the other side, because the folds are all uh, ready to receive it like that. Now, very delicately, just right in the center, you must be accurate, turn it up, and it balances, so we know we're well underway. We'll put the pin down, and I use a little uh, receptacle, I'll talk about that a bit later. And at this stage, what we have to do is to put a twist into each of those propellers. And you always do the same thing. I'm going to go away from me on this side, and up on this. It's finished. You can see it's a neat little propeller. One last thing to do is to prepare the pin. I've dunked it, just the tip of it, into some cooking oil. Any thin oil will do, but it just adds a bit of lubrication to help the thing speed around. So take the propeller either side up, find the little pit in the middle, rest it on the tip of the propeller, and especially on a cold day, you should find the heat of your hands alone will make it rotate. Even the breeze of talking upsets it, so don't.